I know you still got to sign up, but I'm just sorry, guys. Greater Toronto area is the most diverse in the entire world. That means the food options are unlike any other place we've been to. We're going on some food tours in Scarborough and Kensington, eating everything from Asian poutine, Aboriginal tacos, Sri Lankan stir fry, Tanzanian barbecue, Trinidadian flatbreads, and so much more. I'm getting kind of hungry just doing this voiceover. Let's go. What's going on everybody? Welcome to another Toronto episode of Fun Grows Food. Today we are out on the east end of Toronto in a neighborhood called Scarborough, AKA Scars Town. Yeah, Scarbs, Scarbs, Scarberia. Scarberia. Yeah. Scarberia. Scarberia. And we're here with Danny. He's gonna be our guide today, Scarborough native. Today we're gonna be eating some Sri Lankan, some Trinidadian, some Indian street food, some Tanzanian barbecue, and some uh, Lebanese and Middle Eastern desserts. All right, I'm ready. This is the Scarborough food tour. Let's go. Guys, so our first stop on the Scarborough food tour is the car. Danny's trunk. Yo, I need to know the health rating on the trunk. So what we have here is a pole roti or a coconut roti. Okay. So it's not sweet. It looks like it might be a cookie, but it's not. There's no added sugar. This no is added not sweet. sweet. Yeah, that's not sweet. It's like a savory coconut roti. So the sambal, you're going to put that on the roti. So the sambal also has fresh coconut, uh, chili for some heat, and uh, onion. So we're eating chili coconut on a coconut yeah. roti. Coconut roti with coconut sambal. It's kind of like a coconut biscuit with less butter. I've never had anything like this before. There's something quietly addictive about the savory coconut cookie. That was a dope way to start off the Scarborough tour. Let's move on to the next spot. So we're at the uh, Panchbadi Supermarket. It's a big uh, Indian grocery store in Scarborough. And uh, they do really good chat or like Indian street food basically. It's a puff filled with chutney. It was like a really, still a crispy shell. And it was just really juicy on the inside. Obviously, it's like a little bowl of soup. Oh, this one's flowing. As spicy as it is, it kind of has this like cooling effect to it. Makrap paitis. I'm trying, I think. <laughs> it's warm and sweet. Still has that tamarind chutney flavor. Similar ingredients as the uh, penny puri. Yeah. Except a little bit spicier and thicker. Like a penny puri like chili. Here we got the samosa cha. This is like a bust down samosa right here. Let's see what's inside. Mm. Samosa is probably like one of the most popular kind of like Indian foods that everybody knows. It's like a samosa like cereal bowl. Okay. You know, you like broke, you broke it up, you crumbled it, you poured sauce on it. Yeah. It's similar to that except, oh, it's spicy, hold on. <laughs> All right, Manchurian puff. Manchurian is essentially referring to essentially the Mongolians who kind of took over China. Almost like a Mongolian grill. It's kind of like spicy stewed vegetables inside of a puff. Well, it tastes like an American Chinese restaurant. Mm. Mongolian beef without the beef shoved into it. So it's like a vegetarian spicy stir fry, like pizza pocket. Masala omelet. That's like a Indian vegetarian egg sandwich. It definitely does taste similar to a omelet, but I can see that there's definitely some Indian spices in there to kick it up a notch. It goes to show you the food without meat can have a ton of flavor. I would prefer that over, over a regular omelet for sure. Okay, we're finishing up here at spot number one. Where are we headed to next, Danny? Uh, next, we're heading to Martin's Bakery. So Martin's Bakery is a really popular place to get uh, some, some more Sri Lankan food. We're gonna get different than what we tried already. Let's go. That's pretty nice, it's kind of like crispy on the outside, warm and chewy on the inside, really soft. You know, I haven't tasted a lot of things with that kind of texture. Kotu roti, for the audience, obviously, it might remind them a little bit of halal guys. These are not noodles, these are bread strips, right? Roti strips. Yeah. The soft texture to the Oh, that's the super good. Thought of the craziest thing. I'm not saying it needs it, because this is already delicious. What if it had little potato chunks? Okay. Oh, so I don't know if in Sri Lanka they use as much yogurt as they do in India, but a little bit of yogurt just on, on the side, just to cool it down, just to mix it up. All right, you guys, we had to call a slight audible. I saw a jerk chicken poutine, and we were like, bro, I'm getting that. This is a Pakistani-owned jerk chicken poutine. 
Probably not authentic on the fry end. No, it has enough of everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was, was it wasn't real poutine. It wasn't real poutine fries. It wasn't real jerk, but still good. Yeah. I feel like it's like uh, 60 percent of everything. If you just threw on just, I feel like a little bit of fresh onions on there. Tomatoes. That'd be perfect. Now, a little yeah, bit yeah. of tomatoes we're and a little bit of green onions, cilantro. Mm -hmm. That'd be nice, yeah. All right, so next up, we're gonna head to uh, ACR. ACR Hot Roti and Doubles, the Trini spot. We're gonna get some Trinidadian Doubles. All right, so we got some Trini Doubles here. And what are Doubles again? Doubles are basically uh, curry chana or a chickpea stew. Uh, they're put into two pieces of flied frat bread, bread called bara. It's got a little turmeric in it, and then it's topped with some pepper sauce. So it's basically like a curry chickpea sandwich. Yo, it's super fluffy, yeah. super soft. It just like, it's a little bit chewy, but just, Disintegrates in your mouth. Heavy butter, I can tell, but it's good. Double tap on the doubles. You gotta come and get the doubles, man. Sahina. So, similar thing, but it's got spinach uh, cooked into it, too. So you're gonna have the, wow. the same with curry chana filling, the pepper sauce inside to give it a little heat. I don't know if I like it better than the original double, <coughs> but that's unique in its own way, and I'm really feeling that. Yo, give me a drink. Yeah. David, <laughs> banana soda. Did it taste like banana? It does. It tastes uh, a little bit like a banana laughing taffy. Peanut punch with no label. This is definitely house made. And are you saying you don't you don't have a calorie? You don't have the nutritional facts on it? Uh, oh yeah, let me read the nutritional facts. Um, very tasty, lots of sugar. Like, a, you know what it is? This tastes like a peanut horchata. Tanzanian barbecue. Let's we'll start with the kebab. Yeah. The shish kebab is the one on the stick, and this yeah. is just a regular kebab. Coconut kebab chutney. Is with the real authentic kebab. Wow, I feel like the coconut chutney is gonna cool it down for us. That's like a really, really soft, tender meatball that's really crispy on the outside. This is Tanzanian kalbi. <laughs> Tanzanian <laughs> short rib. I really like that short rib. Um, it was a thick cut, but it was really tender. Yeah, super tender. Just tendous. pulled off the bone really nicely. It has kind of like a sour, I want to mm. say vinegar yeah. type marinade. So this is the, the mish, mishkika. Chicken, chicken mishkaki. Yeah. Mishkaki. Right. So it's just barbecued on a skewer, basically. Mm. White That's really white tender. Cassava fries. All right. Okay. Mm. This is actually what they make boba's out of, guys. No. Yeah. Very starchy, yeah. spicy. Got very soft on the inside, though. All right, you guys. We have arrived at the final spot on our Scarborough tour. Not that this. These were all the spots. These are all the spots on this tour. Yeah, this is like the tip of the iceberg in Scarborough, man. What does that say? Patisserie Royale. So it's a Lebanese pastry. There's a French influence going back a while. Let's go in and try these Lebanese French pastries. Yo, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna open up with the chocolate pistachio area 51. Okay. This tastes like the best elf Kegler elf cookie you ever had. Okay. Brownie. I love brownies. Oh, this is gooey. I like it. It was brought together with honey. Mm -hmm. Wow. Bro, that's super good. Cool. I never had that before. Almost like one of those fruit cakes. Yeah. They are kind of packed together. Yeah. Right, I was eyeing this piece right here because it had a little bit of cream on top. Yeah. So that's Ooh. the carabiche. So yeah, cream and crushed pistachio on top. Wow. Floral. A lot of rose flavor. A lot of rose water, rose syrup, Actually, nest of nuts. I'm just going to go in. I love how on the bottom of all these pastries you can, it's a lot of butter and honey, yeah. right? Yeah. Butter and honey? Yeah. Oh, that's really good. Is this a pistachio uh, baklava? Yeah. That's oh my gosh. One of the best things here. This is a cheese dessert? It's cool to eat cheese like this. This is like a form of cheese that we're not used to having. Yo, that's good. You rarely ever eat something that tastes like a cheesy waffle. Yo, that was crazy. Like, uh, like we said, that was just the tip of the iceberg for Scarborough, Scarstown. I think real quick, we just gotta go through and say what was your favorite. Yeah, all my favorites, the, the doubles all day, man. I eat a lot of those, so that's an easy choice for me. I gotta go, hey, remember you iceberg. gotta go back in time, you gotta run back because it's been a long day. More recent now, now I got one in the back of my head that we got, we might have forgot about. The Kotu Roti? Kotu Roti okay, is that, pretty that's good. The Kotu Roti yeah. is really good too. I knew it. I'll give you that one. No, no, no that's no, yours. I you said it. it. You said I went, it. Because I went second. You just said it. I took it. You said it. I took it. It's yours. It's, it's not yours anymore. I get to I say did. the Tanzanian short ribs. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching another Toronto episode of Fung Rose Food. That was amazing. Shout out to Danny. Um, link down below if you guys want to check it out yourself. Uh, let us know in the comments below what other 
kind of cities or enclaves we, sh we should check out, especially around North America. Um, we'd love to see them. And uh, let us know if you enjoyed this video and let us know if you're from Canada watching this. All right, everybody, thank you so much. Until next time, we out. Peace. All right, so that's it for Scarbs Town. We ate a whole bunch of snacks we've never had before, and it was super delicious. But now it's time to hit downtown Toronto to check out the hippie neighborhood of Kensington. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to a very, very special international episode of Fun Bros Food. Andrew, what do you think of when you think of Canadian food? Okay, I'm thinking uh, maple syrup, of course, and maybe poutine. But today, David, we're about to learn. We're gonna be traveling around Toronto, eating at five different spots, eating five different dishes, that were either Toronto made and solely, you know, based in Toronto or dishes that you can only get in Canada. I gotta give a big shout out to Chop Six and Forks for setting up the tour. Let's meet our guy to check out the first spot. Canada, Canada food, food tour. tour. Let's go. Okay, we are here with our guy today from Chopsticks and Forks. Juice up. Hey. Juice up, man. Thank Welcome, you. guys. Dude, we're at our first spot. This is what called Pow Wow Cafe. That's right. And this spot is really interesting. Why? Why? Why is this interesting? Well, I mean, one of the things that most people in Canada don't, don't really know is that there's indigenous that have been here for thousands of years and they've been eating food too. So on my food tour, I start the Canadian tasting with our indigenous cuisine. All right. This is the indigenous inspired taco. You said that this was like a taco based off of a tribe in Santa Fe, New Mexico? Well, it was in New Mexico, but it was by a Navajo that kind of oh, put no. the bread and threw some beef chili uh, on top of it. I see some very similar like taco ingredients, like yep. some Mexican inspiration here. You know what I noticed? Is the flatbread is like almost maybe a little sweet. Yeah, it is. And um, that's completely different than what you would think of versus a savory flatbread with chili on top. Right. Like it really just gave it a whole different complexion. Yeah, I'll tell you this, I think visually it kind of looked very Mexican, yeah. but then when you ate it and with the flatbread, instead of like a tortilla, it totally took on like, it changed no, the texture of it. For how similar the elements looked, the things you had had before, the flavor was completely different. Okay, we're here. So we're here at the next stop, Mou Fritz, owned by an obsessive compulsive guy when it comes to all things potato. He well, went on a uh, backpacking trip through Europe and found himself in Belgium and had fries or frites there and thought, wow, it's completely changed his life. Came back, uh, quit his marketing job and opened up this uh, place where it just features the fry. And this is Ambrose, he's the owner operator. What up? Awesome. <laughs> my, uh, my Chinese name is Fung Tu. <laughs> so uh, this one would be the classic poutine uh, made with uh, chicken and beef uh, gravy, white cheddar cheese curds. So the best poutine is when it melts a little, yet and it's stringy too. Our gravy's nice. Yo, you see that cheese stretch? What are you looking for in a good classic poutine? Cheese curds has to be squeaky, cheesy taste. What I do differently is our fries is thick cut, so you get the potato taste as well. I saw the amount of time and the care that you were taking on, on the frites, and I believe in them, man. <laughs> I actually studied potatoes, like 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 research, university research papers. If you just go in your supermarket right now and grab a potato, you can't fry them. Is that why In-N-Out fries kind of suck? <laughs> it's because they're fresh in potatoes. In they're fresh, they just slice them and then they fry them. Anyways, they suck. <laughs> so this one is the Japo, it's like a Japanese style. Wasabi mayo, Japanese sweet mayo, toasted black and white sesame, seaweed, green onions. I see a little like uh, seaweed, almost like a furukake yeah. on top. Everybody says like it's, it's kind of like a sushi. Kind of like a sushi for them, right? Wow! Mm. Kimchi poutine. Two different sauces that we use is uh, a spicy sriracha mayo, our own garlic mayo, okay. and then kimchi. Those were really good. Completely different flavor profile. Each one has been so different. Oh my gosh. The balance between the mayo and the kimchi. Mm. Next up is the Malaysian curd. Mm. So these are brisket simmered for like six to, to six, eight, ten hours. You know, depending on how the uh, thickness of it. But Malaysian curry poutine. I really enjoy that. It's like the potato took the place of the rice. Yeah. I was just gonna say, imagine a delicious Malaysian curry, except instead of just white rice, it's freaks. I think this is a great way to expose people to Malaysian food because a lot of people probably, unless you're Asian, it's not super high up on your list yeah. to try. So, chili cheese with vegan mayo. 
So. It's really interesting having eaten chili cheese fries your whole life, but obviously you're replacing the fries with frites. What is the difference between a frite and a fry? Frites was originally what they used when they were in Belgium, but when American troops during World War I and World War II were based there, they brought the frites back, but instead of calling them frites, they just decided to call them French fries. This one is uh, the nacho cheese. Uh, I, actually really, I really, really like the nacho cheese one. Uh, that sauce is really delicious. Something you could serve at a, a Blue Jays game. So this is a peanut sauce one. Peanut sauce one. Oh, peanut sauce with I, the I'm, I'm interested with the peanut sauce because uh, I know, you know, in, in Chinese, Cuisine often eaten the peanut yep. sauce too. With the mm. onions, with the peanut sauce, I don't think I've ever had that. But you're right, it really brings out the juiciness to something that can feel a little dry. Okay, so this is curry ketchup. Okay. Everywhere you go. What kind of curry influence? Is this more Indian curry or Indonesian curry? Or? Uh, I would no. say it's, it's like a fusion because it's not spicy. Like it's a little bit spicy, more of a sweetness side. So this is actually our next stop. So welcome oh. guys to Bacon Nation. No, I thought about it. I you thought about it. it. That actually is the third stereotype that Americans would have about Canadian food. Maple syrup, poutine, and bacon. Canadian, Canadian bacon, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pea meal bacon, bacon sandwich. sandwich. Hell yeah. Tor a Toronto invention. The cut of bacon is completely different. Yeah. We're talking about Canadian bacon versus American. Well, we're, we're not talking about the pork belly, like you said. We're talking about the pork loin. So this looks more like one of those slices of pork that you eat from the big piece. I'll tell you this, man. This brioche bun is like unlike other brioches. I feel like it's more uh, authentic. Well, this is better than a bacon, egg, and cheese. I'm going to take it one step further and say this might be okay. the best breakfast sandwich I've ever had. Oh, it's good. It's almost like a hybrid Lexus. You get you get you get power, but you get efficiency. This is a trout bagel. So mm, strong arugula. I see a little jam in there. I'm excited, man. They're Montreal style. The one key attribute that makes it Montreal is the boiling of the bread in honey water before thrown into a wood burning stove. I know what they mean when that bagel was boiled in honey water. That bagel's sweet. People in the States are only used to having salmon locks. Yes. Right? And this is yeah. smoked trout. It's like a similar but not. I mean, yeah. it's different. The trait of that bagel that very much stood out to me was that it kind of tasted like a pretzel. Coconut bagel. That is the very first time I've ever had a coconut bagel in my entire life. So these bagels are definitely smaller than like the New York style. David, sometimes when you get like a New York bagel sandwich, the bagel's like too big. So it's a little bit hard and crusty, but this is a lot easier to eat. Um, yo, we are looking at the butter tart. Andrew, uh, I asked the lady, I said, are people surprised by the butter tart? She said that a lot of people have heard of the butter tart as a Canadian thing. I'll tell you this, I'm not from the bakery world, I never heard of a butter tart. It just looks like a, egg, a Cantonese egg tart. And, and if we have- Which is obviously based off the Portuguese egg tart. Okay. Canadian butter tart. Like summer camp kind of, right? We got raisins, we have some nuts, got a lot of butter. It kind of has a, elements of a pecan pie, but definitely not as sticky. Not as dense, mm. not as sweet, lighter. Mm. It's something that would appeal to Asians because if you guys know about Asian people, typically they don't want their sweets that overly indulgent. Yeah. The Naimo Bar, which is named after a town near Vancouver. Okay, so this is not a Toronto thing, but this is a very Canadian thing. So this is a non baked chocolate square. The bottom part is graham, coconut, and uh, chocolate. The middle is a yellow custard, and on top is chocolate ganache. Yeah. All right, if I was with my parents, I'll get the butter tarts. If I'm with myself, or uh, more younger generation, I'm gonna get that the Nymo bar. All right, you guys, that is it for our Made in Canada tour by Chopsticks and Forks. I think my favorite thing that I had today was definitely the poutine. <laughs> I think the poutine fries. Which version? Oh man, I think the Japanese one yeah. really stood out to me, the Japo. I was like, wow. America loves French fries, but we don't even have like stores that specialize in just French fries on that level with those type of toppings. You it's know a good what I mean? Point. Like, that's a good point. Like, it's we like, value it's French like every, fries, every, but not like how no, no, people every, value frites. Everybody's got to order fries, but you can't care too much about fries. Yeah, <laughs> and there's like different seasonings of fries, but there's not too many toppings. Right. My favorite thing that we had was gotta be that Pimil sandwich. Okay. 
And then it was the indigenous taco. Yeah, I was gonna say the indigenous oh, taco is actually my favorite. Because I never really get to eat fry bread. My sleeper pick was the butter tart. Oh! Because you know why? Reminded me of Dom Top. Yeah? Not a huge fan of the butter tart. I really like the Nemo bar. Oh, yeah. The Nemo bar was nice. Alright, you guys, definitely come check out this tour. We got links below. Please let us know in the comments section below what are some other food tours you'd like to see us take around the world. This is our very first full video we ever filmed in Toronto, Canada. Probably the most international place on planet Earth. 51% of the residents are born outside of Canada. That's crazy. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, we're out. Peace. Peace.